Now on to the closing session. JIIA President Sasae is going to say a few words to conclude this year's Tokyo Global Dialogue. You must be all tired, but uh, let me conclude, uh, uh, try to sum up. I was asked to speak in Japanese for the audience online. Quite a number, a lot of people are listening to this. Uh, you got a microphone? Okay. Uh, First of all, over the course of two days, discussions went on with the world-class experts and listening to their discussions, they revealed many aspects of the world in turmoil. It is difficult to summarize the details of the thought-provoking discussions, but I would like to reflect on them with gratitude to all the experts who took the stage and to the audience who have followed us and also asked questions. And with gratitude, I would like to reflect back on the past two days. As you know, our Prime Minister, Mr. Prime Minister Kishida, has made an opening remark. And Prime Minister spoke with passion about the role of Japan a peaceful nation that contributed to the international community for nearly 80 years since the end of World War II. In April, as uh, the panel here has mentioned, he is going to be a guest, a state guest visiting the U.S., and we'll be holding a summit meeting with Japan and United States. We'll be discussing about the rule of law. And today I have learned many things about rule of law and what it is all about. So the free and open international order based on the rule of law, and he will express his determination to strengthen cooperation along with the United States and like-minded nations. Foreign Minister, Minister Kamikawa, as she has presented her keynote speech. As she explained the so-called excellence of the Kamikawa diplomacy, Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, through the keynote speech, has explained her thought, uh, but uh, she has been mentioning her thoughts systematically and explained her foreign policy in this opening keynote speech. And I heard that this was her very first experience on sharing her thought in such a format. She mentioned about the free and open international order and maintain that and strengthen that. She also mentioned about managing interstate competition and protecting the vulnerable group of people, which will be all colossal actions to be taken. She mentioned about our strategic report, annual report, and she said that she shares many aspects, many views of what we publish as JIIA. And in the opening panel and today's six sessions, this is going to be a unilateral summary from my side. First, starting from Ukraine, the Russian issue. It was the largest challenge that has been discussed. And regarding that, there was I think a consensus that the problem is the largest issue. 
and when Ukraine is going to be, if it is going to be defeated, it is going to be the defeat for the whole liberalism and democracy. And the forces trying to challenge the status quo will be a further accelerating the world towards upheaval. And regarding that, I think we had a general uh, consensus about this issue. Uh, Prime Minister Kishida says that today's Ukraine could be tomorrow's East Asia. He often communicates this wording and in Japan. Uh, we are not taking this uh, Ukraine issue as somebody else's problem. It is a problem and issue that will sway uh, the whole globe. And ultimately, it could be impacting this region uh, significantly. Uh, therefore, I think the Ukraine issue is intertwined uh, very strongly. And that is understood widely within the Japanese people. So with that, I believe that we must uh, keep on assisting Ukraine. Ukraine should not be defeated. And regarding those idea, including Sweden and uh, the Sweden, uh, which is a new country entering NATO force, uh, the importance of uh, the NATO being uh, working together and we, or I, personally believe that we should be, Japan should be uh, working in order to strengthen relation with NATO as well. So all the issues happening is not something or somebody else's problem. We are intertwined. We must do more. And there was many discussions on China, uh, either whether it be East China Sea and South China Sea, the activity and their challenge to change the status quo or else neglect on the rule of law has been discussed. Uh, the economic intimidation or weaponization of its economy was also discussed and on various points the concerns towards China was also shared and spoken here within this conference but at the same time last year in san francisco there was a japan u.s uh, summit meeting and uh, the u.s china relations intention it that uh, summit meeting had a uh, effect in order to uh, release uh, the tension of the two nations therefore we should not be overly uh, concerned about uh, the China issues. Uh, the participant from China this time has been very uh, open and he has been speaking open-heartedly. And we were asking a participant from Russia. However, unfortunately, uh, this person says that Russia is not in such a condition to participate in uh, this global dialogue. But we need dialogue. And I think uh, needing of the dialogue is also one agreement consensus that we had during the dialogue and uh, the Japan-Sino relations is in reciprocal strategic relations and we position our relationship as such. And so along with the US-China relation management, Japan-China relation management is vital is what I think. Regarding Middle East, we also had intense discussion. Various discussion went along. Uh, Israel and Palestine, uh, the two-state solution, although it is challenging, uh, we believe that uh, this is the right path to go. And I think there was no um, uh, discussions that uh, is countering that. Therefore, we need to unite for this purpose. And lastly, the United States issues were brought up. This is very crucial. It is about uh, the 
separations within the, the United Nations and political issues, economic and security implications when Mr. Trump could be returning to presidency. Uh, those things were also discussed in detail. Throughout the two days, uh, there was no time that uh, uh, this topic was not brought about within uh, each of the sessions. So that is how much we are concerned about U.S. And this concern to the U.S., uh, the U.S. people uh, should be uh, communicated uh, with how much we are concerned and thinking about the U.S. And uh, uh, Dr. John Humry mentioned about America's check and balance uh, and democracy resilience was uh, the topic that he also mentioned. I, too, believe that uh, U.S. is difficult. However, it is not, it, it is a um, demo democratic world, and we need not to be overly pessimistic. Each of the nations uh, will follow its policy. And let's say if uh, Mr. Trump could be returning to presidency, Each nation will be following their policy and to explain about their positions or else explain about why their national interests could be different. And that importance was also brought up within the discussions. However, the way to bring the topic up is going to be the problem. So within the official area, if the friends and allies will be uh, countering each other, we clearly know who is going to be benefiting from that condition. So the words of the president is very impactful and very meaningful. However, we should look at uh, the actions taken and to take our actions. JIIA has an annual report published. And when the world is within the turmoil condition, we have been putting it within our report, and we also made a proposal. It is a serious condition. However, we must not overly exaggerate uh, the situations, and we must be overcoming uh, the situations, which is possible. So I think we should be cautious while being optimistic. And I think uh, the global dialogue has been making a consensus on that. And with that, I would like you to bring that home with being that as a takeaway. And for the participants, thank you very much from bottom of our heart. And let us see you again in Tokyo next year. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Sasae. That concludes this two-day dialogue. Thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Please join me in thanking all the panelists and moderators. Thank you very much.